Whoa, thanks Manuel. If you don't know where that piece of fabric came from, then definitely check out the administration of fabric video that Manuel went through on our channel just a few weeks ago. Now, welcome, my name is Austin Leibel, and today we're gonna to be talking about some of the different product experiences and personas of a fabric environment in the new hot Microsoft fabric topic, so let's get to it. Hello again, my name is Austin from Pragmatic Works and I am a trainer and we talk about Microsoft products here. Hopefully you've seen some of our introduction to fabric videos or our fabric video on how to go through and set up fabric in your Microsoft tenant and how to enable that and uh, have some administration topics around that concept that was taught by Manuel. But I'm gonna be going through and talking today about some of the different product experiences or personas that have recently been added to the Microsoft experience in the Power BI service. Now, to continue to get the most up-to-date information on Microsoft Fabric from Pragmatic Works, make sure that you have liked and subscribed to our channel to get the content as quickly as it is available for you because there is some changes coming at a very rapid pace. Things are uh, being added, things are being modified, so you wanna get the most up-to-date information, make sure you're staying tuned to the channel. If you're interested in any of the other products that we offer for Microsoft soft topics like T-SQL, Power BI in general, uh, how to work inside of the Power BI administration in the past and how to do it in the future, definitely make sure that you are also subscribed to our on-demand learning platform as well. Now, when we have different product experiences or personas, what are we talking about? Well, to better understand that, I think we should go over and check out the Power BI service and see exactly the different product experiences that are available to us and talk through each of them at a high level overview. If you want some more intricate information, definitely go and check out my introduction video to Fabric that is also on our channel. All right, so over here in the Power BI service, so I've kind of our traditional format, but there have been some pretty unique changes to this uh, web page uh, over time. We are in a web browser. This is still going to be the powerbi.com Power BI service, so nothing has changed there. It's just some of the different capabilities that we have as a part of the Power BI service have changed dramatically. Now, everything from here looks great, but at the very bottom over here, this Power BI symbol here, this is where some of the changes have really come into play. Now, by by default, whenever you log into the powerbi.com, you're gonna go over to just the Power BI experience. But when I click on this symbol here at the bottom, I have some of these different product experiences or personas as we like to call them. So what are they, why are they here, and what can they be used for? Well, I can go over and say, you know, I'm just a typical Power BI developer. I create Power BI reports, I share them throughout my organizations, maybe I create some dashboards for executives with my organization as well. So all I'm ever going to use is Power BI. But in order to integrate some different technologies into the Power BI service as well, and to enable more people to have a more user-friendly, graphical user interface way to go through and interact with some of these different personas, uh, they have been added to the Power BI service in this new term called Fabric. Now, uh, I'm gonna click on this green Fabric icon right here, and just gonna just take us to that high-level overview of the different product experiences here. But let's talk through each of these. So we have Power BI, right? We've talked about that a little bit. Data Factory is going to be our way to go through and move and transform data. Whether that is using like a pipeline or a data flow, uh, either option is available to us. Synapse Data Engineering is taking a lot of the information and the topics from Synapse Analytics, like working with a lake house, working with a data warehouse, working with code to move data, working with code to do machine learning models and things like that. So we have data engineering, we have data science, all these different things. Let's kind of dive into each one. You notice here at the very bottom of my screen now, the icon has changed just to the overall micro. Microsoft Fabric icon, but let's go and explore just from top to bottom what is available here. So to start with, we're gonna go and check out the Data Factory experience. And for the most part, this does not change a lot about what we're seeing as a part of the Power BI service. Primarily what has changed is what is available for us to go through an author in a new state in the kind of top bar there. What are the uh, kind of icons we can go through and quickly click on to launch a new Dataflow Gen 2? 
or a data pipeline here. A data pipeline would be a way to take data from a source and move it to a destination. A data flow, Gen 2, would be a way to take data and have the Power Query editor allow us to be able to go in and take that data and transform it and then load it to a destination as well. But it gives us that usual and typical Power BI uh, Power Query editor to be able to do that with. Now, if you've worked with Data Factory before, you might know that there's another type of data flow as well, one that uses Spark and has more of like a graphical user interface, uh, very similar to maybe like a data flow in SSIS or or uh, SQL Server integration services. That is not available at this time. There is, as far as I know, no uh, plan to implement those there. So this is truly the Power Query data flow. I know all the Power Query users out there are gonna be very happy with that. Now, just because the data pipeline here is available in Data Factory does not mean it is the only place to go and work with that. You can click on the bottom over icon over here and also go over to the Synapse Data Engineering. You'll get a few more icons to be able to launch things like a lake house or a notebook, but you also still have data pipelines here. Again, we're wanting to kind of say, hey, maybe you've worked in Synapse Analytics in the past, or maybe you've worked in Data Factory in the past. Wherever your background might be, and those two have some similarities as well, that's why they have data pipeline in one and data pipeline in the other. So there's just a way to go through and have the familiarity with wherever your experience is been in the past to have that same concept in the Power BI service with Microsoft Fabric. But we also have things like notebooks as a part of this. So a way to go and communicate with a Spark cluster and be able to write a code language like PySpark or Python for Spark or R or some other code language to be able to move and transform data as well or to potentially do some sort of data science principle. So if we go over to the product experience icon again at the bottom and go to data science, you'll also notice that notebooks are here as well because you can use a Spark notebook to be able to train a machine learning model. You'll also have your models and experiments here as well as a part of this product experience. So you can go through and be able to do your data science directly in the Power BI service and use Spark to do that. Now there's a few others at the bottom here, data warehouse and real-time analytics. To better understand the data warehouse, I'm actually going to go back to my data engineering tab for a moment here and talk a little bit more about the lake house. The lake house in the Power BI service is a way to store your data in one lake. And one lake is essentially just like a one drive for your data. You have this easily way to go in and communicate with your data and have all of your data stored in one location, or you can go through, you can endorse that data to make sure that others in your organization know that it is useful, it is valid, it is ready to go. Uh, you can apply different security rules to this as well and governance. So we have our lake house where we store data in our one lake, but we can create this data warehouse infrastructure. Now, there are some limitations to that. You are able to query that with something called a SQL endpoint, but there are some SQL operations that are not going to be allowed. Things like creating tables with SQL would not necessarily be allowed in a lake house. Where we do have that experience would be over in our data warehouse. So from a data lake house, you can actually go and create tables in a data warehouse, uh, but the product experience would be very similar to people who have worked with a SQL Server Management studio in the past potentially. So we have a warehouse where we can go through, create tables, but at the end of the day, the data is still going to be stored on our one lake, still going to be stored in the Delta format, just like the lake house tables would as well. You can notice that you can also load a warehouse with a data pipeline. So pipelines are going to keep coming up over and over in each of the different product experiences. Now, finally, at the very end here, we have real-time analytics. And this would be a way to take streaming data and to be able to analyze that data in real time. Now, this is going to use something called a KQL database or a Custo query database and use the Custo query language to be able to go through and query that database. So this is going to be useful for going in and, and taking that streaming data and doing an analytics on that as we go along. Now, if I wanted to go over to a workspace that I had Fabric enabled in, I can go in and see all of the different items here in one space. So you, the product experience is more that's just anything, a way to go through and easily navigate to a, a new icon or say, hey, I want to go create a pipeline or I want to go create a, a notebook. And whether you go to Synapse Data Engineering for that notebook or Synapse Data Science, it's ultimately the same product. Where you're going to end up creating that is in a workspace that has Fabric enabled. So again, if you're 
you're interested in going through and uh, understanding how to enable Fabric in your Power BI tenant, definitely check out that video that Manuel went through in the last uh, video in this series we've been going through as a team on Microsoft Fabric. But we're gonna kind of dive in and talk a little bit more about some of the administration topics and a few more things about how to go through and work with different Power BI uh, administration in general and how that relates to Fabric. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one, but I'm gonna hand it back over to Manuel. So uh, Manuel, catch.